All right, this is Pre-Calculus B, Unit 6, Lesson 6. This is the second part of the video, Part 2. And we're going to address uh, linear motion or, or motion in two coordinate plane directions in a, in, a in a vertical sense. And so there's a couple of formulas you need to remember. Distance equals rate times time. Under constant velocity, distance equals rate times time or the x position uh, of, a ho of horizontal movement, because gravity is not working against horizontal movement, is going to be the velocity in the x direction, the velocity in the x direction times time, right? And then if we have an initial starting position plus the initial position, okay? But generally, we're going to consider initial position zero, right? Okay. Now, you may recall from our last video that that, that horizontal component is, is going to be the initial velocity. The initial velocity. Now, of course, the initial velocity is the constant velocity in this case, times the cosine of the angle of elevation, and then times time. Right. So this is, this is the x vector so to speak, or the x vector, and the magnitude of the velocity vector cosine of the angle, okay? All right, so here's, the, and then the, the y component. The y component is, this is a formula that needs to be memorized. If, unfortunately, if, if I could teach you calculus, you wouldn't have to memorize it, because it's just the integral. The, uh, the the integral of acceleration is velocity. The uh, integral of velocity is is position. But uh, we'll hit that here, and uh, in, in, in actually not too far in our pre-calculus uh, lessons that come at the end of the course. But here's the here's the y component. The y component of the velocity is is basically going to be the initial velocity. All right, sorry is going to be one-half the acceleration of gravity times time squared plus the initial velocity, the vertical component of the initial velocity, vertical component, v sub y, vertical component, uh, times time plus the initial disposition or initial uh, placement. Again, uh, we actually typically don't necessarily start with y equals zero uh, for the initial placement. And as you know, velocity in the y direction is going to be the initial velocity times the magnitude of the initial velocity times the sine of the angle of inclination, right? So the entire equation becomes y equals y equals one half the acceleration of gravity times time squared plus uh, the initial velocity. So the initial velocity times the sine of the angle theta times time plus the initial horizontal vertical position. Okay. So there, there we have our formula. And that value for g depends on your circumstances. g is, g is 9.8 meters per second per second. So basically what that says is if you drop an object from rest, after one second it'll be going 9.8 meters per second. After two seconds it'll be going twice as fast or 19.6 uh, meters per second and so on. Every second it adds another 9.8 meters per second. Or if you're in feet per second, it's 32 feet per second per second. 32 feet per second per second. So after one second an object is falling 32 feet per second. After two seconds it's falling 64 feet per second and so on and so on. Now of course this is all simplified by, uh, by uh, assuming that we are not taking into account friction which becomes an issue as you go, go faster. And terminal velocity depending on the object is somewhere between 150 and 250 miles an hour. All right, uh, so that's the point at which terminal velocity is the point at which wind resistance or friction 
equalizes the acceleration of gravity and the object no longer accelerates. It reaches equilibrium, reaches its terminal velocity. Okay, so, but we're not going to account for friction because it greatly complicates and actually results in what we call a differential equation. All right, so here we go. Well, let's take a scenario where we're shanking balls off of a cruise ship. That's a fairly common activity on cruise ships. So for this problem, we're going to consider the, the surface of the water to be flat. And we are hitting golf balls off the cruise ship. So the initial height of the ball above the water is going to be, let's say, uh, let's go in feet. So y ought, y ought is going to be 20 feet. So we're 20 feet above the water. Okay, And we're striking the ball at an angle of 20 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, And it has an initial velocity of, of 440 feet per second. 440 feet per second. That's about 300 miles per hour. Golf, by the way, has the second fastest ball of any sport. Highly actually has a faster ball. Okay. And so here we go. Let's break this down into its horizontal and vertical components. Its horizontal component is going to be, so its horizontal component, the velocity in the x direction, is going to be uh, the in initial velocity times the cosine of 20 degrees. Okay, And the velocity vertical, call it v sub y, is going to be 440 times the sine of 20 degrees. Okay, All right. So let's, uh, let's break this down into our, our uh, parametric equation. So our x component, all right, this right here, is going to be our initial velocity, 440 feet per second, cosine, cosine of 20 degrees, times time. Now our initial position, we're considering this to be position 0 and positive going that direction. Okay. So, so our initial position is 0. So we don't have to do a plus initial x position. All right, and then our, our acceleration. And I forgot to put one thing on here. Gravity operates in the downward direction. <laughs> so there's a negative here, negative 1 half, negative 1 half. Now we're, we're operating in feet per second. So g is 32 feet per second. So negative 1 half of 32 times time squared plus the velocity in the vertical direction. This should be vy. vy, 440 sine 20 times t plus the initial height, 20 feet. Okay, let's simplify a little bit. 440 cosine 20 times time, comma, negative 16 t squared plus 440 sine 20 times t plus 20. Okay. All right, so there's our parametric equation. So our position in terms of x and y, or position in terms of t time, position of function of time, is going to be that. So let's let's model it in Desmos. Oh, got to open Desmos. All right, Desmos. Okay. Well, I did not type it correctly. I fat fingered. Let's try that again. There we go. OK, 
And this is really kind of fun here. So we've got Desmos, and we're, let's input the parametric equation. Uh, 440 cosine 20, and need parentheses, otherwise it doesn't know what to do, times time, or we can just put t, comma, negative 16t squared plus 440 sine 20 t plus 20. Now one of the things we have to make sure of is that we have degrees because we're operating in degree land. Okay, so 440 cosine to 10 to k okay, negative 16 plus 20. Whoop. Okay, degrees. Okay, zero to one. Okay, and we're not seeing anything because the initial height is 20. So we got to zoom out here a little bit. And we can see in, in one second from t equals 0 to 1, the ball is traveling in this path. And notice it's starting to curve down. When t equals 2, it goes a little farther. When t equals 3, it goes a little farther. 4, a little farther. 5, a little farther. 6. Seven, eight, nine. So nine seconds. That's a long flight. Ten seconds. As somewhere between the ninth and tenth second, the ball struck the ground. Okay. Somewhere between the ninth and the tenth second. Let's change the scale here. And it seems to have traveled a distance of four thousand feet. Now remember what we're, what we're, what's going on. We're hitting this golf ball in a vacuum. <laughs> there's wind. There's no wind resistance. This is not realistic. Uh, typical drives. The best drives are, are uh, 400, 400 yards, which would be uh, 1,000 1,200 uh, feet. Okay, so that's that's quite a drive. All right. Oh, I was going to change the, the vertical scale here. The y-axis from 0 to 500. Okay, get a little bit more of a parabolic curve here to it. All right, so we can answer lots of questions like um, what, uh, how far will the ball have gone? Uh, so, and uh, how long will it take for the ball to strike the ground? And all of those can be answered. What's more is we can model the position uh, of the ball over time. Okay, let's set P equals. Okay, and let's plot P. Okay, for time equals 0 to 1. T equals 0. Okay, uh, if T equals 9. T equals 0, there's the ball, right? And we can model that position over time and watch it and watch the ball move. Somewhere between 0 and 10 seconds, right? And so it models the position given time. And it's really kind of cool. All right, let's answer at least one question here about this. When does it strike the ground? Okay, the height, the y position is 0 when it strikes the ground. So let's solve the initial position here, negative one-half t, negative one-half or negative 16 t squared plus 440 sine 20 t plus 20 equals zero. Okay, and we can solve that using the quadratic equation, right? Let's do that, and that'll be the last thing we'll do here. Okay, so a, and we're using the quadratic formula, remember ax squared plus bx plus c. A, A is going to be uh, negative 16. B is going to be, B is going to be 440 sine 20. 440 sine 20. And C is going to be, C is going to be 20. 
okay? And x equals negative b plus or minus, so plus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, negative 1.3, so let's, that's obviously not relevant to r, so let's do the minus. And we can't do lowercase x, capital X. All right, so 9.53. That meshes with what we were talking about. Somewhere between the 9th and 10th second, the ball strikes the ground. So 9.53 seconds. All right, so that's how to write a parametric equation to model motion under gravity.